Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Magic Arena Run. Today it's Midweek Magic. It's also almost Happy Yargo Day, so they decided to smash it all together into a single Midweek Magic event. I am not reading that. Um, it's basically just Yargo Brawl. Um, you'll, um, if you edit the deck, you'll find that's the name of the event. Um, so, important of note, there are two emblems that come with this event. There's Frog Spells you cast cost two less to cast. And actually quite more relevant now that um, we have a lot more frogs. Thank you, Bloomborough. Also, whenever a frog you control enters, you may sacrifice a creature if you do draw a card and that frog gains all of the abilities of the sacrificed creature. This is also a free-for-all event. Um, you have to remember that um, when we had this emblem before, it was for pre-context and there were a lot that had way, way too many copies of your original Yargle. But now we are going to be doing a Yargle deck and we're probably not going to choose Yargle itself. Um, sure, Mono Black is fine, but it's also kind of boring. We're going to go with Glorb instead. So, Glorb Calamity's Augur. Uh, 3 mana, 2 for Death Touch Frog. You may look at the top part of your library anytime. You may play lands and cast spells with mana value 4 or greater from the top of your library. And you can surveil too, so easily a way to gain value. So, we're going to do a very quick look. Actually, I wish we can take a look at um, all the possible commanders here. So actually, no, we. No, it's it's best to look at it when you're making a deck from scratch. So. We'll t first, we'll put Glarb back. Um, no reason to confuse things. Also, yeah, we don't. We unfortunately don't have this. I think I could have gotten it before. So there are not that many frog commanders. So we'll. We'll do a very quick look. Also, um, Toad, Toad Rider is um, also a valid choice here. So we're going to go for Frog, and we're going to do Commanders. So these are all the valid ones. Um, it So Tatsumari Toad Rider is a valid one. This does give us um, green, green, blue, black. This is original Yargle. We are not playing. We actually don't even have him in... I, yeah, I ended up cutting him from the actual deck. I kept Yargle and Multani as an as an alternate, but we cut original Yargle. There's also Urg, Spawn of Turg. We're definitely running a bunch of the other frogs. Having the reduction on the generic cost is actually a big deal. It makes a lot of these um cheaper and more playable. Even the Yargle Multani is um, kind of scary as it is. Also running Clement, Ronok. Yeah, we're pr pretty much running almost every one of these. So what's our strategy? Um, mostly frog tribal. So let's mostly frog tribal with a bunch of good stuff. Uh, our other key cards are cards that allow you to choose a creature type um, and gain, get bonuses from that. Especially we want the especially we want Herald's Horn because even more reduction is nice. We also want a few ways to get bounce some cards back and forth so tasa deep dwelling is our ad addition for this one defense of the heart a way to shoot your creatures we're assuming we're presuming our opponent is going to have a lot of creatures as well so that's going to be a bit big one we want to have quite a bit of removal as well but then um, we also want to have a lot of synergies to work with it so and we also want a few top end spells defense of the heart is mostly to shoot your either crater hoof or end raise forerunners why not both we could also do that so uh, and if I were to put all these frogs in their proper place, our curve looks more our curve looks more reasonable. So let's see, splash slasher becomes a two. Technically, also also a four. This one becomes a two. Get rock becomes a two. Three becomes a two. So our curve actually looks more like this. Roaming Throne, nope, doesn't get the benefit. We're also running a few of the nice special guest cards. What notion keeps a pretty good one. This one costs one. This one also costs one. Probably one to cast it more. This one doesn't get the benefit. We are running a few enchantments as well because um to get um to get the benefit for the most part. So Realm Wet Walker costs one here. This will cost two. We're running Croaking Counterpart because we want to have additional copies. Why not? Selling Crier costs one. Star Poor Mage costs one. 
also like all these talents for example freak me busted yeah so this is what our curve actually looks like it's a lot more reasonable we will get a lot of plays on our our mana base might be a bit of a mess i probably could have skewed it towards more green but we'll, we'll run it like this for now we, we are definitely heavy green here that's the frog way that's for sure we're not exactly running that much black we're actually missing a few board wipes like um cyclonic drift is our only reset switch here and it's kind of expensive So, foreboding landscape can shoot her for a land that we can get here. It does give, it does allow us to drop um, turn two into turn three. I would love to get a swamp though to get hit our other colors. I also don't like that we have this on the first part here. I'll take the free mulligan. Okay, this is more reasonable. We are, we only have to get draw. Oh, we're now now we're missing green. But we do have the Patrick banner. Yeah. Hitting hitting the colors that we need is going to be a big issue here. I might even cut this. Let's try one more mulligan. Okay, this one. Green, blue, metallic mimic. We have a few plays. I might cut roaming throne. This one only hits creature spells, so we can't cast this. We can just cast these instead. Opponent opening with the Prismatic Vista, pretty nice. We have a few fetch lands where we didn't go all out crazy on them. So, I'm gonna see. I definitely want to drop this one. It depends what our opponent's next turn play is. We only get to deal 3 damage unless I unless I play the Metallic Mimic first. Which is a bit of a risk depending on what our opponent's follow-up is. Uh, opponent might have a removal spell, which is kind of fine. We definitely want to play all our colors out, that's for sure. They might have a removal spell for this, we'll see if it happens. Also, Get Drop Monster gets the, gets the discount. If they have the removal, they probably do. Oh no, they don't have the removal. So this one's a bit of a this one's a this one's a bit big as well. So what we probably could do is um, splash lasher first. We give up on offering if, but um, that's that's them being. Oh no, opponent's going for six, and we did hit our black mana so. I can swing kind of bait it out with this. But what I want to do is splash la what I want to do is cast this, then cast this, and I definitely have the no, I don't quite have the mana for it. This one's only based on creature type. Like I can tap tree, generate two green, but I'll be missing the other one. I'm gonna swing first, see if our opponent goes for the block. They have to respect this. Yeah, they respect it. Now, I could just sacrifice this to draw a card, but first we do the tap, then we are not going to sacrifice. Because um, sacrificing it doesn't do much because it doesn't copy the creature type that's selected. Yeah, slightly awkward unless we can hit another green source. This is a bit of this is a six six. I would need to cast this and this. Opponent might also just have straight removal. Oh, they're just going for Eldritch El Evolution to search up a five. Now it doesn't copy the mana discount here, so but there are a lot of uh, five mana value frogs and a bunch of other cards as well. We'll see what they get. Ooh, 
Cavalier of course is an is a nasty one. The death. And they do hit their land. Thankfully both of well the peak land is an untapped land. I oh, know it Oh no, it will enter untapped. They could choose that one. Oh no, they went for the tap land. Okay. What card could they get back? Unearth. They just unearthed at six. Okay. So knowing that So I could do Hmm. I would love to do this. I would love to do this, then this, but um that's gonna be a next turn play. So for now, I might actually just have to have target creature I control fight target creature I don't control. Then we pass. Also, the death touch actually really combos nicely with Hunter's talent here. So we will. So like I could tap these two and this convert it to green. Why well, am I gonna sacrifice that? Get gets it? Oh no, they're not sacrificing it. They would have got, gotten to double dip, but they're just going for blood gas instead. They could sack it for a land, but they could just wait on this. Oh no, they're just gonna go for the land right away. They have it. Makes sense. They get to draw a card. What do they have to get back? Most likely six again. Which is a bit annoying, but I definitely want to take out get drop first. One is just cycling for a land. Okay. It gets a free draw. Gets a free draw. That's pretty much that is the synergy of get drop monster. We we're trying out something different, so. Do they have a fight spell? That would be so annoying. We'll just take the fight. They could have a hexproof style ability, but it looks like they're both aiming for something. So yeah. At least it's tapping the correct mana. Okay. Hmm, I would love to play the Polluted Delta. I could just play this to give myself ward, but I'm gonna go for Hunter's Talent. They're signaling that they have something. Could be a fight effect of their own. Oh, it's just revo- Okay, that, that's a good one. But now if our opponent swings with this, I can block it. If our opponent swings with this, I could also just block as well. This one just gives ward, which is pretty nice. When it enters target creature control, can't be blocked this turn. Then I could, like, say, exile this, get, get it back. With, with a nice ETB. Yeah, our opponent had... I considered adding this one. This was a, would have been a very good add. It's, it's also a relatively cheap trick. I could cut some of the more expensive stuff for it. When it sh goes for a shared summons, they're setting up their next turn. I would love to hit defense at the heart. Plus one plus zero and trample is nice also. But I'm most likely gonna just play Long River Lurker. Level this up. Ooh, they're going for oh they're really going for the land play. If 
can attack with that, I am very willing to just block with this. So next turn, swing. I could um I I could level this up all the way at six, but I definitely want to drop this one first. Hold have the Simic Charm on that up. Technically this one is still cheap because um So definitely want to get something that enters untapped. I have one black source, so I definitely want to get a second one. Yeah, I think we're taking the overgrown too. Oh, I needed to get a blue black one. So, cast this first. Now, let's see. I can channel this to make blue, but I would need. Okay, this is actually fine. This gives me green, blue, black. But I probably... Yeah, I probably want to just do this instead. No, we'll play this one. And another creature up here. We're gonna keep that up there. So these two get to attack for free because blood gas does not. Then let's do a check. Um, Excel it if you do return it to the battlefield that is out of control. Definitely doing that. So we're gonna lock this one down. We could sacrifice a creature, but I don't see the reason to. So if our, our opponent could play all this expensive stuff, but yeah, um miss skipping out on the skipping skipping out on the discount is a very big crime here. Sure our opponent could say play the prime time. Then but then we just go get we just go get rog. We just go get rog plus hunter's talent and we could have like say Simic Charm back up. Well if we got our if we properly got our mana, that was the thing. We kind of this one kind of saved us a bit, but we kind of messed up here. We when it is just gonna go for prime time. They probably get field of the dead. It'd be nice if we had a way to blink this, but we don't. They're definitely going to. They're definitely gonna get field. Wait, is field of the dead legal or is it still banned? No, it's still banned. They just went for the demolition ruin, etc. We do have basics. Unfortunately, we know. Okay, play the land. Put your land up top. I probably won't need that much mana. Well, technically, technically I could, but um, I want to. Spread it out a bit. No, I could sacrifice the draw card, but we're kind of going all in here. So let's see. I could pump, but. Yeah, we're just going for the win here. Opponent left themselves quite open. Let's see, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, this is sort of dominance here. Blood gas is probably... Yeah, us being able to lock this one down. The, the blink effects are really going to be powerful here. That's why I figured I'd pass a... We could have... Well, not teleportation circle. We could add displacer kitten. That is also another one. Duskmore just announced that they had... They have a two mana core sky fisher in blue, so that would be an interesting way to add that as well. 
But yeah, mana is gonna be our biggest issue here. We have we're going to have to mull a lot. I'm gonna try one more of this, then I'm gonna see if we make a few changes. Okay, this one we have our three colors. Um Fountain Horn Fountain Fort Charmer turn one is fine though. It's a bit underwhelming, but I'm gonna keep this because we get we will most likely just play Dark Slick Shores. I kinda want to just run up the horn first, then play uh, then play other stuff later. Okay, Mask Vandal is an interesting one. I play this one first because opponent is going for Italian to get Rob Monster. So crit opponent is gonna get to drop that on turn two. And then authority on turn one. Hmm. I would love to have a card in the yard. I guess we can. Ex but hopefully we hit the creature card with this one. No, you hit the Blooming Marsh. Which is fine, I, I kind of still want it. Let's say our opponent plays this and plays, they start ramping out quite a, quite a bit, so I will just have to play Splash, Splash Lasher for the time being. I could play Fountain Port Charmer first, then play... Opponent with the budget mana base. Is this good enough to creature cards in your hand perpetually gain? I guess it's fine. I could also just play this one first. I'm not quite in a hurry. I actually no, we should just I'm concerned our opponent's just sitting on removal. I'm gonna play Herald's Horn first. I mean Oh wait, we we do have a way, so you Oh we do have a way. I have a way of nuking this. I will reveal, put that in hand. Well casualties is also a nice choice. So we do Mountain for Charmer first. One's oh, gonna gain five bit of life. We I could just sacrifice this. Or decline. I wanna see how it works. So yeah, it set it up so I have to sacrifice first. We'll sacrifice this, draw a card. Exile to mute that. Then I only have one more, so I probably just play this. I can't offspring it, but that's wait. I'll cast with offspring. Oh I can offspring it. Except I'm missing the second blue. Oh well. We don't we don't offspring it. Oh, Talia has also the same effect, so I could sacrifice Mass Vandal, but we'll wait. So next turn, I probably attack first Skyskipper Duo to to blink this one again. If our opponent drops multiple creatures, if our opponent drops multiple creatures, it's like um I need them to control three or more. So. I would be able to play land, def sky skipper, then defense. Well, just destroy that. Okay, so they don't want me re redoing it. That's a bit annoying. I guess I I can hope for casualties of war, but that's gonna wait a bit. Let's see. Nope, it's a land, but I'm fine with that. We do need another blue though.
I could also cycle this, um, channel this to get this one back if I have to. Yeah, our opponent's also kind of playing control, controlling as well. I would love to play this first. I also want to hit this one here, so I'm going to hold on to it for a while. I guess we do just play this. I guess I would keep that on top. When it might have a fight effect, um, it is what it is. Well, it might have a bite effect. If it's a... Yeah, that's... And we'll take action. I figured they'd have that. We'll have, we have to let it happen. We, we could sacrifice, but that does nothing. Well, it draws us a card. When it is kind of going on the solo creature plan, so our defense is not doing much. I'm hoping they play a few other things so we could also. Hmm. Sacrifice a land, draw a card. Okay, so this is gonna be a bit of a strip. Gonna be a bit of a reach for us. Okay. Let's check if they have any. No, they don't. And that's only for creatures, so not the greatest for us. Oh, opponent left in the yard, so they probably intend to reanimate it. Well, only one creature, but um, they're aiming for the drain life. Plan. This red elder. So done. Yep. I guess we go for Triome. I guess I also want to go Hedge Maze too. Arcane Signet's not gonna help us here. I'm gonna cast this one first. Um, probably not gonna sacrifice. We're gonna need a lot of blockers. Psychic frog. I don't know how playable it is. One is not gonna return either. Oh. Well, technically, if he has another creature, has to return it. The misbred elder returning is optional. Anything so, when is this going to be the card draw? Let me describe. I guess I could just cash a piece of war at this point. Let's see what if our opponent drops anything else. Source of foul. Yeah, we will counter that. Yeah, we'll reveal. That's our extra card draw. Get sticky point sentinel. We control gain death touch. So, hmm. So you can drop a lot of cheap things, but first we have to answer the board. Take this one out because this is the one that actually has land types. Return to owner's hand. 
Nate, there is an argument for returning the Masked Vandal because our opponent might have effects, but I kind of want to wait on that. I could just play the Skyscraper Duel after I attack. This is going to be a long, bat long drawn out battle, but it is what it is. Also, our opponent leaving it in the art again. Okay, so. Yeah, we're going to have this come back. Opponent really likes leaving it behind. It's, they're definitely playing the reanimator strategy. This entomb, return it to hand. Okay. That's another cheap way to get it back. Yeah, reveal, take that. Long River Lurker is actually quite good because. We can then return something to return something, but we need something more significant than just returning stuff for the sake of it. So we'll do Gitrog first. We do get to play a land. We have a Croaking Counterpart. Create a token that's a copy of target non-frog creature, so actually a bit a bit of a non bow for us right now. Also, I guess what we could do is we could just cast this first. Okay, so. I just start going white. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. It will come back. It will come back tapped anyway, so. I might as well do it here. Just take advantage of the fact that does not have reach. Exile it. It comes back. It buffs this. And target one other creature you control. Mm, most, most likely the Long River Lurker. Deny the sacrifice. End the turn. Yeah, it didn't really matter which one you bounce back. Uh, yeah, it can't be blocked this way. We're just gonna start buffing this a bit. Start playing lands. Whenever another creature you control enters. So this one's Leap Leaf Guide is also a good drop for us. Oh, we're hoping our opponent is kind of stuck. No, they just have Pledge of Unity, but not much else. We were, without any trample, we were going to just um go. We were just gonna fill up the board. Our def turns out our defensive the heart was not gonna be that defensive. Oh, opponent was just playing the one creature play, but if our opponent had multiple creatures, we would have had that option. A okay, nice chimil. So let's go do one more game of this. See how things turn out. I really feel like um people are sleeping on just having lots of frogs. So this might be an exception. Grolnok is a pretty, pretty good one here. So this gives us green for creatures. It doesn't help here, but ooh, we also miss out on the splash lasher. But I guess what we can do is we can do Leap Leap Guide first. Yeah, opponent is just gonna play that. Just have a nice tree tree creature. Oh, we really want to hit the blue source now. I mean, green source now. I I figure opponent's gonna play a lot of creatures, so we really want to have defense at the heart. Yeah, 
Yeah, we're just kind of whipping on the mana. I guess I play this first. We are taking quite a bit of damage here, but that's just how it is. Next turn, we go for Glorb. Then the turn after that, we might do the Slash Lasher Offering. Opponent, yeah, opponent, this one's this is going to actual go white plan now. We'll have to... We'll, we'll just have to accept taking 7. Ooh. Oh, they took the Field Mystic too. They're just missing the mana for it, so... Hold on, I need to now check. Like, okay, channel's a bit of a dud here. Opponent, because our opponent can't cycle. Because our opponent can't cycle it back. If our opponent has plain counter spells, yeah, we can concede this one right away. We, we, we were on, we were on the back foot from the very beginning. We, we were not gonna win that one. Our opponent had a very good aggro play, we, and we kind of did not. We, this is probably an argument for having more black base removal. I probably would make adjustments for that. Also because of green-blue, expect a lot of counter spells as well. We're kind of not exactly running that. We're running a few, just not that many. I might just go Verdant cat Catacombs right there. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna go... We probably could cut this, but... I'm gonna go Verdant Catacombs right away for... Prismatic Vist is an option, but... We're going to go for the Triome. Next turn we can go Vista, then we can go Vista, then we can drop... Now the thing is, um, these don't exactly look at each other, so I'm only just filling the board with them if ever. Only goes Miss Dread Elder. I'm not gonna play this right away. We just play this one first. Surveil. We do have a few non frog creatures, but um, now that I'm thinking of it, this one's kind of not anti synergistic. I guess we just go Glarb first. Keep gumming, we gum up the board for the time being. Table passage is nice, but that will be later. So this one, any basic to do, we probably go for the island here. I could swing, but we're probably on the defensive on this one. One I could just return this to hand. Start growing this. I don't know if the, that plus one plus one counter is worth it. When it goes for Clement again. Probably not gonna bounce it, but now they... Oh, they're just... Okay, if they're doing Pawn Profit right away, we get to snipe this.
No, there's an argument like um I would eat one of these creatures. Like I could eat Clement to give this one the ability, but they probably won't. So I actually have a few decisions to make here. Because I could go for the big five five, but I probably want to get rid of because Clement isn't exactly quite doing anything. Who am I kidding? We're, we take it out right now. I guess I also shuffle the land. Let's go for let's go for green. That's our second. We get poison dart frog, which we can't cast because it's actually too cheap. Yo. Now we're gonna see if our opponent no nope, no one mana counter spell here. So next turn we can start say. I'm gonna offer the trade. I'm gonna offer the trade, I'm fine with it. Then next turn we have we can drop a bunch of frogs. And set up the card draw later. One is probably gonna bounce this back. They might want to tap this for mana first so that they could replay it. Let's see. Did they figure it out? Oh no, they didn't figure it out. You you could have tapped this for mana first. They're instead going for Fountain for Charmer, which is pretty good. So we do have a Hinterland Harbor we can play. Um, most likely... Most likely grab the underground mortuary. We'll bin the sewers. We can play the ground catacomb off the top. Dream to and and transfer is an option. It's actually look. It's actually not, not so bad. Um, what we could do is a poison dart frog. Probably want to probably want to play the downpour. Probably want to play the downpour mage first. Dream blue and transfer. It has reach, so we're gonna target our downpour mage. So we're not going to use that ability anytime soon. In fact, we could sacrifice it. Wait, hold on. Let's do a check on the ability. Tap up to one target. Yeah, if we sacrifice it, it doesn't get targeted. And might as well just go Bellowing Crier. I could sacrifice it now, since it's probably never going to untap. But I think we have other ways of untapping, so we're gonna just leave it there. Then we discard a card. We'll discard the Cloaking Counterpart, since our opponent is also into frogs. Next turn, we will get a lot of mana off Tree Tree City. Oh, and also having their own Tree Tree City, so not quite that much, much mana as we do yet. Gonna go Pond Prophet first, draw a card. Whisper, so whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. So 
So he's going to do this one. He's going to draw a lot of cards too. Which means... We're going to have to hold on to this Notion Teeth. Hmm. Gonna have gonna have to hold on to the notion teeth here. This notion teeth is gonna be quite important. Oh, opponent's gonna sacrifice for it. So for this one to have the effect, I get. Oh, they did not want me to. They did want not want me to croaking counterpart it. Fair. So I need to have a... They're going to bounce this one. I'm trying to get really cute here and all that. I... Wait, did they target the token? Oh, they might have targeted the sacrifice to move the ability there. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, they figured that's a vulnerability. Yeah, bouncing the token. So as much as I want to play this, I actually have to play this one first. Frog. So I can play. Yeah, Ponce is going to take that, that's a given. Sacrifice the dual. I could actually sacrifice the dual port mage instead of just waiting for it. I would still get like four mana. So exile up to one target creature you control return, or I could just um, exile this instead, and we don't sacrifice it. It might have counter spells, so that's gonna be a work, bit of a problem. I'm hoping our opponent goes for removal first. Okay, this one's just surveil. Gonna even level it up. Yeah, this we'll see if they have the counter spell. If they have the counter spell, they will draw the card, but um, it stops their chain effectively. They might have a removal spell instead, but it also kind of stops their chain, and it's it's not that bad for me. Oh, decisive denial! They're going for the fight. That's fine. That also stops the chain. They still draw the card and all that. Also, if you copy this one, you're 
you're not really getting all the effects because some um, these are these other effects are not copyable. Just give this death touch. Yeah, am I supposed to do it now? Yeah, sure, there's still refilling, but um, we'll also refill the bit. Yeah, but our opponent is going to go through a lot more parts than we are. Yeah, our opponent taking out the notion keep is a bit of a pain. We do hit our own pawn profit. And no, <laughs> and our point was pondering, but yeah, we were going. We were just gonna swing in. We were, we probably had more of an advantage than they did. I also had the distant melody in hand. Yeah, I think it's either that or that gameplay loop is unbelievably. Yeah, but our plan would have been to try to go for one of our. Go for Cyclonic Rift or it's either Cyclonic Rift or or the others or the others go. But there we go. That was a pretty good run with this one. Although that last although that last battle lasted a lot longer than it should have. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this episode of Magic Arena Run. Oh, I forgot to show share the deck list. Um, the deck list is gonna deck list here. Deck list will also be on the link in the description. That's going to be it for this episode of Magic Arena Run. If you like what you saw, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, turn on notifications, and whatnot. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to see you guys again next time. Take care, God bless, stay safe wherever you are. Have a great week, everyone.